How's it going guys? It's Mike and today we're back in my 2021 Nissan Rogue SV and today we're gonna do a video on the five things that I hate most about this 2021 Nissan Rogue and to be completely honest with you I don't hate the car I don't actually dislike it at all I enjoy driving it I I love the car it's a great car it has no real real big drawbacks but at the same time living with it every single day for three months now i have put around three and a half thousand kilometers on it and it's given me some time to live with it and to see the different things that i either like or dislike about the car and there's a few things that stand out that i kind of don't enjoy and i don't like and if you're in the market or if you're out there trying to get yourself one of these and comparing the different models and the different vehicles in its class, at least you can go out and know kind of what a real world scenario would be living with this vehicle without actually buying it. And hopefully this video will help give you guys that kind of understanding of what it's like to live with this vehicle and what it's like to actually own one. And today is kind of ironic that I was gonna make this video and my screen stopped working. Uh, this screen right here uh, completely gave up on me. I was actually on a trip about 100 kilometers from my house and I needed the screen and I was using it for GPS but at one point it just decided it needed a break and it didn't want to work anymore and I couldn't get it to, to work again. I tried many different things but I did get it to work. So right now it does work. Uh, if I turn the vehicle on. I don't know if you guys can see the screen from there, but you will see it in a moment once I reposition the camera. The screen does work and you don't have to worry. You can get it to work again as long as you follow a few different steps and procedures. <laughs> uh, and I will make a full video on that just so that I don't make this video too lengthy and I don't take away from the topic but I will be following up with that video. So if you guys wanna know exactly what is going on and what's wrong with, or what happened in my scenario, then definitely check out that video. I will be posting it soon and look out and I will tell you guys what happened, exactly what I did and what worked and what didn't work. So hopefully you guys don't have this same issue happen to you, but I don't think that it's a known problem. I think it was a one-off glitch and I think I know why it happened too. So watch that video and I'll let you know exactly what I think is the reason for that. But right now, let's go for a drive and I'll tell you guys the five things that I hate most about this 2021 Nissan Rogue SV. And now we're on the road. And I do apologize if the lighting is a little bit funny. It is raining today, so I will do my best to kind of keep us on the sunny side because it is kind of still sunny. I know it's weird, it's sun, sun showers today, but uh, it is what it is. Let's, uh, let's enjoy it. <laughs> so uh, basically, the first thing that I will mention about driving this thing that I do not enjoy is the size of the gas tank. Now, the size of the gas tank in this vehicle is very similar to all the other vehicles in its class, as well as other sedans and other sedans that I've owned. Uh, I believe it's around 55 liters, the gas tank, and usually in the city for myself, driving pretty modestly, uh, I get around 350 to 400 kilometers per tank. Now, that's not very good, I would say, uh, for a 2.5 liter motor, and this one is rated at, I believe, 8.1 in the city, and 7.9, or no, 8.9 in the city, 7.9 nine or 7.1 on the highway uh, I will tell you on the highway it does great you actually do get very good gas mileage uh, you do around seven I was driving on the on the highway earlier today on a lengthy trip and I got seven kilometers per hundred and it was great and honestly on the highway it's perfect but in the city I find that once you have to stop at lights and get up and go and get that mass moving it really drains your gas tank and that's where you get around the 350 to 400 kilometers if you're on the highway which I usually am not uh, I will tell you guys you will get more because when I whenever I take it on the highway I get amazing mileage but in the city it's not the best in the city I will tell you I have been getting around 9.8 and that's not that bad 9.8 is still decent it's not the best it's not what it's rated at but it is what it is <laughs> I don't know how else to really say it 
that's why I get to my point of the bigger gas tank. Uh, I honestly wish that this vehicle came with a bigger gas tank or it had the option to upgrade to a bigger gas tank. Uh, I believe that for an SUV of this size, even though it's not a full size SUV, it isn't quite a good size SUV. It should be able to do around 500 kilometers from a tank. Now, I understand that on the highway you will get that mileage, but in the city it's not the best and not all of us are driving just highway. Now on to my second point. And if you haven't watched my review of this vehicle, the one month review, go and check that video out. But this is the one point that, ha that I have in common with that video. And it is the fact that the lane keep assist is very annoying. And what do I mean by that? Uh, it's not because I cannot keep it in the lanes. <laughs> it is because whenever I am driving on an industrial street or a street without lane markers, without actual lines in the road, where it's a one way each way, or one lane each way, my mistake. What happens with the repairs in the road is it picks those up as the lane markings and it thinks that you're crossing over the lane markings. And those repairs in the road, the tar snakes, is that, that's what we call them around here anyway. Like those, I don't know how well you can see them, but they, are, they should be quite visible now that it just rained. And those repairs don't always follow perfectly straight. They sometimes go over, they sometimes go on a diagonal, they sometimes start to veer over slowly. And what the camera starts to pick up is that you're veering out of your lane or that you're not staying in your lane. And the issue with that is when you have both the lane keep assist indicator and the lane keep uh, intervention, then you start getting into issues of it trying to pull you towards where it thinks the lane is even though it's not really the lane. So whether there be a curb there or whatever the issue is, it starts to think that you're veering out of the lane and it starts to try to get you back in there. So I honestly drive with the lane keep assist off. I drive with the lane keep indicator on. So it will beep and it will let me know, but it doesn't actually uh, try to pull you back into your position into the lane. And I find that a little bit more safe for city driving because you never know. Sometimes you're in a construction zone, sometimes you're in an uh, industrial area or even maybe in your neighborhood. And there might be a street that doesn't have lane markings. And if you're driving down the street and say there's a person there or another car parked or whatever the issue, a curb, and it tries to take you back into where it thinks the lane is and there's no lane there, you're going to have a bad time. So I just like to tell you guys about that before you actually experience it for yourself be aware be ready and if uh, if that is something that you think is gonna annoy you or like it annoys me turn it off because for me personally I think it's a safety thing if it starts to pull you back into where you think where it thinks there's a lane and there's no lane that's not gonna be good the next point that I will mention number three is the amount of cargo room that you have now it's kind of odd because in the front there is tons of room for storage the doors are made to hold a large size water bottle so one of your uh, your metal water bottles that you guys have for just carrying around to work or on a hike or whatever it may be it's made to fit that you have all this storage underneath here underneath where your center console is you've got a very deep center console you've got a glove box uh, there's another pocket on the door over there because you don't have all of the window controls and all of the mirror controls that you do on the driver's side as well as pockets in both of the seats and tons of legroom in the back seats the only thing I don't understand is why there is so little room in the trunk and the trunk is also slanted I believe on a little bit of an angle to help I guess take things out or whatever the the thinking was behind that but anything and everything that I put inside my trunk slides right back to the door so right when I open the door every single time I go to get something everything is very close to me so it's nice and convenient I guess but it's annoying because every time I go to put something new in I have to slide everything back and push everything back and put it back in its place so that I can get something else in and when your trunk is only one-third or one-half full like mine usually is it's very annoying and it can get very annoying <laughs> I don't know how else to put it uh, it's just it's not convenient and it should be well thought out and more thought out and I believe that this is something that should be addressed 
as well in the other models that have the droppable load floor, maybe that is something that is already fixed in those models. I haven't experienced it. I haven't been able to go out and check one of those models out, but that is a feature in the, S, uh, the SV all-wheel drive, I believe, where you have the floor that can actually drop a few inches and give you that extra little bit of room for loading in whatever cargo you have. But I think that that would definitely be a good improvement if it was a little bit more flat or if it was just a little bit less uh, slidey, I guess I would say, because everything always comes right to the door. All right, so I just pulled into a parking lot just to show you guys the trunk and what I'm talking about. And I'll bring my phone just so I can show you the level. So you can see here, I've got probably a good six inches before the seat. Everything has slid except for one item. And if I pull out my phone and we turn on the level, so if I put my phone down on the level, you can see it ain't level. <laughs> uh, it is quite off no matter where I put it. You can see that it leans in. And if I move my stuff over here, it also slopes in. So the whole, the whole uh, trunk bed is sloped in towards the middle and sloped back. And I know it's not much, but with the carpet being here so slick, uh, everything slides. And I just wanted to show you guys, maybe it's just not me, maybe it is actually an issue with these things, but I guess we'll wait and see. And if anybody else has experienced this, let me know in the comment section. And number four on my list. So this one is kind of uh, another thing to do with the electronics, and I don't understand the reasoning behind it, but it is what it is, I guess. <laughs> another one of those, but the key fob. So a lot of times I like to use the remote start feature uh, just because it helps me get ready in the morning to get out of the door easier and whatever. I just like using it. And more often than not, I will use it. So once you actually get the car to, to actually read the fob, because I'd say one third of the time you'll get it started, the other two thirds, it doesn't really like reading the, the remote start. Like it'll lock, but you'll hold the remote start button and nothing happens. So once you actually finally get it to start and it's running and you get out there and you get in the vehicle, I usually press the button on the door handle and I open the door that way. And that's usually fine. You get in, you hop in and you're in. Now, if it reads the fob to open the door handle, I don't understand why it doesn't read the fob to start the car. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right guys? So as soon as I get in, I sit down, I press the brake, and I go to press the start-stop button. And what happens? It shuts off the engine and it thinks that somebody's trying to steal the car. Now, I know that that's a feature so that nobody steals your vehicle. I understand that. But if I just open the door and it read the fob in my pocket, it's not reading the fob in my pocket when I'm sitting here and I don't understand I don't have anything else in my pocket just the key I don't have any kind of crazy jackets or anything like that covering me so it's not like there's multiple layers of clothing for it to go through it just doesn't like reading the fob I don't know and I've had it happen to me where I've sat here and I've pressed the button like three four five times and it doesn't want to start and I'll take the, the fob out of my pocket and I'll have it in my hand press it and it works and that's just like one of those quirks where it's why why doesn't it want to work i really don't know i couldn't explain it to you but if it reads the fob when it's in my hand 100 percent every time it starts but when it's in my pocket it doesn't like it so i don't know if it's just me or if other people have experienced this let me know in the comments but that's one thing that i find quite annoying is that it doesn't want to start for me and i've also had it where i haven't had it remote started and i've just walked up to the vehicle opened the door, got in, tried to start it, and it doesn't wanna work. Now, honestly, I don't know why, I don't understand why, and I wish I could tell you, but if you want, I'll pull over right now, and we'll see if it actually happens. I'll get out, I'll remote start it, I'll hop back in, and we'll see if it wants to start for me. 
So we're in park, we turn it off, and I'll hop out and I'll remote start it. Put on the brake and this time it read it but you guys saw how I had to honk it twice so when you remote start these vehicles the Nissans the process is lock the vehicle and then hold the actual the start button and I had to do it twice and I was standing maybe six feet away I was standing literally in the spot next to me and it didn't want to do it so I don't know if it's just me or what it is. Maybe I'm holding the key wrong. I don't know, but it does not want to work for me most of the time. And the last thing on my list, number five. So it wasn't that easy to make this list. So some of the things may seem like I'm nitpicking, but it is kind of annoying. And these are things that you will come across if you own this vehicle that will annoy you and that you will find that are either something you can live with or something you can't live with. And depending on what it is, some things are a deal breaker. So that's why I make these videos for you guys. But let's get to the point. Number five is it doesn't let me park it. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, where I park, there's a wall behind me, like a concrete wall. I park in an underground garage most of the time and it does not let me park the vehicle. Uh, it'll stop about two feet to a foot and a half from the wall and it just will not go. You can take your foot off the brake. You can, you, well, if you press the gas, it will slowly start to go. But at that point, you're not trying, you don't want to give it gas. If you're two feet from the wall and you just want to tuck it in a little bit closer so that you're not sticking out of the spot, you, you don't want to be giving it gas. You want to be able to let off the brake and have it roll. Well, not in the Nissan Rogue. <laughs> uh, it'll stop for you actually while I'm reversing. Once I get to that about two foot mark, it'll press the brakes and it'll stop and it's kind of jarring at first if you're not expecting it and your passenger will be like whoa did you hit something because the abs kicks in and you hear that like that abs noise i don't know how to explain it but it's not pleasant <laughs> and once that kicks in you start thinking to yourself did i hit something but no it's basically the vehicle trying to protect itself from driving into something at slow speeds and I'm sure I can turn it off somewhere, but I've left it on just because I'm sure it'll save my butt one day. But when you're reversing, it'll brake for you. And it's quite annoying because then once you let off the brake, well, once you press the brake to let it know that you're actually there and you know what's happening and you let off the brake again so to move it that extra couple feet that you wanted to go. No, 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 not today. <laughs> it doesn't want to go. So you kind of have to give it a little bit of gas and pray and hope that you don't drive it into the wall but you need to get it into its spot where it's supposed to sit. So it is what it is, right? Now at that point, you kind of have to live with it or turn that sensor off. I've chosen to live with it because like I said, it might save me one day, but it is quite annoying that every single time I have to kind of really ease it in there to let it know I'm not gonna crash you. I'm just getting it in the spot <laughs> because half the time it thinks I'm trying to kill it. But I think that is going to about cover it for today, guys. Uh, honestly, thank you guys for sticking around this long. Thank you guys for watching. If there's anything else you guys want to see or anything else you guys want to know about the 2021 Nissan Rogue SV, let me know because I will have this vehicle for quite a bit. I have a three-year lease, so I will be driving it for an extended period of time. I will be making more videos on it and updating you guys as I go on different things. And that video on why the screen stopped working and how I got it to start working again will be coming out soon so definitely stick around and check out the other videos because there will be more videos coming for this thing and if you guys haven't watched my review yet then check out my one month review because there's a lot of information in that video that I didn't include in this one and definitely you guys should check it out if you're in the market for one of these hopefully my videos helped you guys out a bit if they did drop me a like and drop me a comment let me know what you guys liked and let me know what you guys want to see because i'm making these videos hopefully to help you guys out so once again thank you for watching thank you guys for sticking around and hopefully i will see you guys in the next one so until then 
Take care, ride safe out there. Peace. Thank you.